Welcome to JabberCast, a Hunger Games podcast hosted by JabberJays.net. Today is Friday, December 1, 2023, and you're listening to episode 43, The Ballad of JabberJays and Foxface. My name is Crystal, calling in from Hawaii, and I'm joined today by Carla in Australia. Hi, everybody. Jared in Georgia. Hey, y'all. And Aaron in Canada. Hi. All right, so today we are joined by a very special guest on our show, Jackie Emerson, who any Hunger Games fan knows played Fox Face from the Hunger Games. Welcome, Jackie. Hi. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. So what have you been up to since the Hunger Games? It's been a long time, um, but we saw you recently at the ballot premiere. It was such a surprise, and it was so nice to see your face again. <laughs> oh, thanks. It was so much fun to be there and to see everyone and to support the franchise. Um, I've been up to a lot. I went to college. I graduated. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes. I came back and started writing a lot and acting a lot, and I actually now have a ton of mm. films coming up, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I saw you her promoting some on your Instagram. Yeah. Recently, so. <laughs> like, so now we're all, everyone's promoting like seven projects at once. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as I mentioned, uh, we saw you recently at the ballad premiere. So tell us about that and what you thought of the movie in general too. <laughs> I thought the movie was fantastic. It really felt like a Hunger Games movie, which was so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it was so great to come in. Yeah, as I said before, support the franchise because it's so near and dear to my heart, always having been such a huge fan. <laughs> and I actually came in not knowing anything because very unlike me, I hadn't read the books. But I think part of it was like after being in the initial trilogy, I needed like a break a little bit. And so a palate cleanser, you could say. Um, so it was really fun to come into it just not having any idea what was going to happen. And I was pleasantly surprised and I thought it was so fun. And it was just, um, it was great to see, um, just to see everybody again and sort of reunite with the fans and be a fan and all of the above. So premiere wise, how did it feel in comparison to the previous ones and especially to the first one? Because I know the first one, it was before, you know, we knew that it was going to be ginormous, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Well, the first premiere was, it's hard to compare it because that was the premiere for the movie that I was in. So I was literally on the red carpet for like two and a half hours. And I don't know if you guys remember, but it was actually a much bigger carpet because it was at LA Live Nokia. So it was this huge U and they had this massive fan wall and it was such a, a rush. I think there's no feeling like that. I think it was that feeling of like, oh, we've all worked on this for so long and we were all so nervous about like whether or not it was going to be good. And then <laughs> to be at the premiere, there was such an energy around it of, I, I think everyone kind of felt like, oh, this is, you know, something really special is happening right now. And it was um, so spectacular to be able to be a part of it. And also to watch the movie for the first time with all the fans in the theater was um you know, such a cool experience. And I, I commented on this in one of my interviews on this red carpet of, um, you know, sometimes I go like, is it still relevant? Like, <laughs> do people still care? You know, is. walking on the carpet while, and we don't have to get into, you know, like politics in the world, but while everything's kind of happening in the world right now. And I felt like, oh, this feels dystopian. Like Correct. there's a bit of this that feels like the capital. And I think it's a juxtaposition that we all live with every day. And I think Hunger Games kind of um, exemplifies it so beautifully. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. So like you said, it's been 10 years. Um, Do people still recognize you on the street when you're out and about? Yeah, they do. (laughs) It's shocking to me. I don't think I'd recognize myself. But (laughs) what I get a lot of is people being like, do I know you from some, like, did we go to dance class together? And my problem is I'm basis. So I'm like, maybe we did go to dance class together. <laughs> I don't know, you know, uh, I get really nervous about it. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, um, it's always sweet when people do because it's like, oh, great. I'm, I'm a fan too. It's fun that it impacted so many people for so long. Um, and I'm like, oh, I feel like we've like, I feel like kindred spirit. I'm like, we've all been on this journey oh. together, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's been happening a lot more recently, I think, because there's been a bit of a, a resurgence of late. <laughs> Since you filmed in an outdoor arena and seen on screen how terrifying a much smaller enclosed arena is in Ballot, do you think Fox Face could have still made it to the top four in the 10th arena? 
Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, she was so smart. I think she would have figured out some, I think she would have looked at the wreckage and probably like found that trap door, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, like before the Rachel Zegler character did and, and hidden out somewhere like that. Um, I just think she's so smart. I don't know if she would have made it to top four because there weren't as many places to kind of like hide and be sneaky smart. Mm. But, um, and also she wouldn't have had as many tools at her ability. Mm. Like they weren't really sending gifts and things like that. But I do think she would have figured out a couple of things that maybe none of us thought of. So you mentioned the rubble. How badly did the explosion scare you? <laughs> it made me <laughs> jump so much both times. Oh, I know. It was so <laughs> unexpected. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> but it was still really good. It was yeah. a great moment. <laughs> so other than the arena for the first movie, with arena sequences or like in the case of the Mockingjay movies, like arena-like scenes, would you have liked to be a part of or filmed in? Oh, um, God, I think, it, oh, in this arena or any could arena. it be any of yeah. the other any ones? Which one? I think it would have been, I'm like, I'm so jealous that everyone got to film in Hawaii for Catching Fire. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, <laughs> not that I didn't love Asheville, but I was yeah. like, also then they filmed in like Berlin for the final Mockingjay and I'm like, oh. I was like in North Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah, way less exotic. <laughs> yeah, it's actually because um, because I live where they filmed yeah. Catching Fire, and Carla at the time was going to school in oh. Berlin where they were filming Mockingjay. <laughs> oh my! Wait, where in Berlin did you go to school? I actually lived in Berlin for like four years. Oh really? Oh my yeah. god, that's so cool. Yeah, no, I went to um the uh, free university. Actually, it was a, a wow. Event. Four universities, so yeah. no way. My university had a program right near the free university. And yeah. so I was there all the time. And then I lived in Charlottenburg and um, Dahlem. And then I go back all the oh, time because it's. Were, yeah, you were in the middle. I was, right? I was literally there. Yeah. But That's it's, so it's my absolute favorite. I, I love Berlin. I, love, I miss yeah. it so much. My favorite city in the world. It's so yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. My dream is to film there. I'm like, it's going to happen one day. It was I'm funny it though deep. because whenever mm -hmm. I, I watch the movies now, it's like I, I watch the scenes and it's like, oh, that's the subway. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I felt the same way. I was like, yeah. I know what this is. <laughs> that's Kudam. Like, yep. Yes. I wanted to say a lead up comment to my question that kind of made, led me to thinking this question. But really, I was saying before you got on, one of my favorite uh, moments in The Hunger Games was when you and Katniss run into each other mm -hmm. in the yeah. arena. And you have that moment of just looking at each other. And literally, it was just a, the look that passed between you two. But that was like, oh, my God. It just felt it was the most I felt it, I felt the humanity of it. Mm -hmm. And like I could feel myself in that. And it was so powerful. Thanks. And so uh, and they seem very like kindred spirit characters. So my question is, um, have you ever imagined where the character arc of Foxface would have gone if she had been the winner of the Hunger Games? Oh, that is so interesting. I've, I've never thought about that. Well, first off, can I say that that's my absolute favorite scene as well? It was also really, really fun to shoot because of how subtle it had mm -hmm. to be. I remember the director literally being like, these are all the thoughts that are going to go through your brain. And you're going to do it in 30 mm -hmm. seconds and you're not going to show any of it on your face because the camera's been so <laughs> wow. He was like, literally, I just need wow. you to think it. Yeah. And it was like, first mm. you're like terrified. Then you're like, maybe we could be friends. Then she like goes for her knife again. And then you freak out. And then you're like, are you going to be my friend? And then you're going to leave. And I was yeah. like, okay. And so my favorite thing afterwards was I saw somebody did like a social media, I don't know, like a TikTok or Twitter or something where they did like. It was like on my face and they like hashtag through all those emotions. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was so excited because I was like, You wow. nailed it. Like, you know, it's such an amazing yeah. thing when you're like, Oh, I worked so hard on that. And the fact that like somebody actually like resonated with that oh enough to God. do that was just really cool. Yeah. Um so anyway, that's that was <laughs> that was my little story of that moment. Um but yeah, so I I you know, I really don't know. I think um I, I mean, I'm a big proponent of, and I'm sure I think we're going to get to this, but like the suicide theory, which also mm. like, and I also do, somebody online said this in response to actually the variety thing that um, went kind of viral. And I actually was like, yeah, I resonate with that a lot, which is that like book Fox face, maybe not, but movie Fox face. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm. that also makes sense to me mm. because um, like book Fox face, I could see her like actually, you know, thinking she's smart enough not being familiar with that you know 
Um, and but like actually really trying to do it. And I think book Fox face, um, I think probably would have been pretty fucked up and probably would have then like hit in a genetic lab or something like that and tried to just kind of like really like dive into work with it. Um, I could also see her mm-hmm. going in a totally different direction and trying to be just like the best mentor ever because she'd be so smart about like how to like school her clients. Um, mm-hmm. But movie Fox face, I think just couldn't like didn't want to kill anybody. And, um, Mm -hmm. and like knew that it was going to come to that. And so I think that it's hard to then foresee like what would after look like, because that's like a fundamental thing that would have happened. Mm. I love it. Great answer. Her name name was Finch, right? Her character. Yeah. So, okay. I also, so I've been kind of trolling TikTok recently and like, (laughs) I don't have a lot of followers and I'm also not verified. And so like, (laughs) nobody knows it's me when I post on these things. Like they just go (laughs) put two together. But it was, there was like a post that went around the other day. It was actually so funny. And my friend sent it to me and it's so many views. And it was like, it was like react, like imagine like reaction or POV of like your mother, sister, daughter watching, um, their beloved daughter from district five get called Fox face all over national television. Like as she rides to the death. and it was so funny. And then there was a whole argument in the comments of people being like, her name is Marissa. And then someone was like, no, it's Finch. And so I was like, da, da, da. and like the fact of the matter is that someone was like, no, the first script said Marissa. And I'm like, the script didn't say fucking shit. Like, you heard it from me. You heard it from my mouth. Um, the script did not have a name for the character. At least the draft I saw. And, um, And I came up with the name privately just because I was like, this feels like her name. And, Mm. um, and I really, I can't remember her last name that I came up with, but it was definitely Finch something. And, Mm. um, and yeah, I, I love that. And I, I thought it was her name and I didn't think it'd make it into the movie. And then we were doing the interview scene with Stanley Tucci. Gary, the director was like, what's your character's name? And I was like, Finch. And he was like, great. Her name's Finch. And then at the very, very end of the interview, Stanley Tucci goes like, like that and then like the sound kind of cuts out yeah and so all these fans online people were trying to figure it out and everyone was like i think it's finch and some people were like no it's this no it's that and then now i'm fine and i didn't say it for a long time because i was like that wasn't suzanne's that was like mine that i came up with so like amazing so i didn't want to like claim it (laughs) but but now i'm like i can talk about it and then i got so nervous all these people were like marissa and then i commented on the post on tiktok and i was like you guys, her name is Finch. I named her. <laughs> and nobody commented. And I was like, oh. I was like, nobody responded. Yeah. Well, I was like, now, I just don't know. They don't know what it's me. the opportunity. <laughs> that's good. I know. I was right. like, I, they, it's, it's, you know, that's my little stealth TikTok, everybody. <laughs> right. I thought that's, that's a good homework assignment for everyone yeah. listening is to Look go find up. you yes. on TikTok, yes. like, yes. comment, verify Finch. I really don't even post that much. I just, I, I just, um, I just recently have been seeing more and more stuff because there's been so much stuff my friends are sending me that's like box face content. So I'm like, I'm going to go post on this. And then, and I'm like, nobody sees it. That's hilarious. That's so funny. Okay, so um, Jackson is actually Jared's twin brother, but he couldn't be with us today. But he's going to mm-hmm. ask. No way. Jared is going to ask my Jackson. My sister's identical question. twins, so I have an affinity. Oh, cool. Twins. I love that. Yeah. Great. I love that. Great. Well, Jackson, I'll be on, on his behalf. I'll be asking this question. So um, he loves you too. So. Um, Jackson asks, uh, what would you change about any of the subsequent movies in the franchise? Oh, I mean, I think this is an answer that like Francis Lawrence himself would give, which is make three and four the same movie. Cause I mm. think that splitting it up was a mistake. Um, ironically, I think you could have afforded to split up Ballad of, uh, Songbirds and Snakes, but I'm also like, whatever. Um, but I, I do think that you could have done the final one as one movie. And it felt like it was kind of like, I know that they creatively did it. It did feel like it was kind of following a trend. And I think the third movie just felt kind of slow. Mm-hmm. And I think it could have mm-hmm. done well to be combined. But what I will say is that Catching Fire is a flawless movie. And I don't think that you should change anything about it. it is it's right. Catching Fire is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like I liked the, the split, but for Ballad, I felt like I don't know that the District 12 stuff would have been enough substance for its own Yeah, movie. I think you're probably right. Um, and I, it, the more I thought about it after, I kind of thought it in the movie because I was like, oh, there's like interesting pacing here. But then the more I thought about it afterwards, the more I like loved it because I was like, that was so different than any 
standard most studio big picks it's like it's so standard it's so like this is what it is da, 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 da. you know like you know the arc of it you know whatever mm-hmm. and I loved that it was different and I loved that like I, once it hit the end which was unexpected for me like I didn't know how it was gonna end I didn't know what was gonna happen I was like oh I get it I get why you needed that like that makes total sense to me so so one yeah. thing that was really cool was that um they put parts for the movie and those were identical to the parts of the book. So I really like that mm. little touch. Oh, that's so. great. <laughs> that's really I love that they did that. I think they've always been Francis the director I love. I think he's always been so good with the fans as well and like really honored the source material. I think Hunger Games was in such good hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we had talked a little bit about the the Fox Face Suicide Theory, but I wanted to get a little bit more into it because um, I you, you talked about how you go and you read things about Fox Face on on TikTok, but um, I've seen like a really long argument slash conversation on Reddit about this. Oh yeah, it's on Reddit too. People, people get so passionate about it; they're very I know adamant. But I love it. It's like that's all you want as. That's all you want is like a performer and as an artist. And like, I know that I can't take credit for like creating the character at all, but it's like the honor of getting to play a character who impacted Mm -hmm. people so intensely. It's just really cool. Like that's like a, that's a really special experience. That's kind of the thing that you can only dream about, you know? Mm. Yeah. So I, I like, I like, I liked what you said about how like you think that it was different for book Fox face and different from movie Fox face, because when I first uh, actually, when I saw, first saw your interview with variety, I was like, no, she wouldn't, she wouldn't <laughs> commit suicide. I said, why did she say that? But, but you know, like Carla was telling me, you know, Oh, like there's the, 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 the berry scene where she's like training and things like that. And I was like, I guess. <laughs> well, and I told you too, it's like, I talked about it with the director early on because the suicide theory was present before the filming even started. And the director was like, mm-hmm. absolutely not. And I was like, cool, that makes sense to me. Like she doesn't know the plant, but she's really smart, but then she almost is too smart for her own good. And like, mm-hmm. I really liked that theory. And then they, uh, cause that was all green screen. And then they made it like plant identification or like, and I was like, you literally put that in the training sequence yeah. and then when you get the movie, I was like, she fucking committed suicide. Like, yeah. but I also think that it's a much more, um, I think it's such a nuanced conversation about like, you know, cause candidly, I, I'm not to like throw this around lightly, but like, I would really struggle in a situation yeah. like that. Yeah. And I would, I would probably, mm-hmm. if I was like, if there's like a nice, easy way for me to take myself out of this without having to do whatever. And it would be an act of rebellion. I would totally do that. And so I love that. Like, the conversation even exists because I think that like, and I also want to say that like my interview with variety is also not the be all end all. It's just like the way that I feel about it. But I think the beauty of all this stuff is like art exists outside of all of Mm -hmm. us. And so everybody can interpret their different things from it. There is no right answer. And I think it is a beautiful interpretation and it's an interpretation that my eyes were really open to kind of after filming. And it was something I thought about actively during filming. I was always like, would I have done this? You know, would I not, you know, but it, it's been really um, fun to see that argument kind of take on a life of its own and that interpretation, you know. And I mean, it could, you know, like Ballad has a really open ending. It's really ambiguous. Yeah. And it, it could be the same thing for her, right? I mean, she could have just been tired. She could have just made a mistake, you know, yeah. um, something yeah. easy like that. So, yeah, it's just. But I like that in the movie that it feels more like that's what it is, because I do think that that is. Um, a very nuanced take on what these kids have to go through. And I think it makes it even more devastating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now that all this time has passed, what is your most memorable experience from filming the hunger games? Was it the heat? (laughs) Uh, How how long did you have to to, um, film in, in, in the forest and stuff like that? We were there for like three months. Oh God. (laughs) Yeah, wow. well, we were in the forest for two months, and then we were in Charlotte for a month. Um, but I, yeah, loved being in the forest. It was actually so much fun. It was like summer camp. But I, I mean, I'll definitely oh. say like what I think I've probably said in eight million interviews, which is like the most memorable part of it was like getting to actually witness this thing that I was a fan of come to life mm-hmm. in front of my eyes, which is something that like so few people are ever lucky enough to experience or witness. Like it just every day felt like it was like a day out of my wildest dreams. And, Mm -hmm. you know, coming together with a cast of like everybody kind of being in this experience. It was a lot of us young people that this was like our first major set. And um, to get to go through that together and the friendships that we created was really 
um, special. And so that, that I will say is the other most memorable part was it was just like the friendships and, you know, getting to every day walk to set and be like, Oh my God, that was that thing that I imagined. And now it's literally in front of me, you know, like, and that's Mm. the coolest feeling on the planet. I think, especially nowadays when so much is shot on green screen, the fact that everything Mm -hmm. was practical and like, they really built everything. We were really in a forest. Like there was a cornucopia in the middle of all these pedestals. Like that first scene was terrifying when we were filming, like running into the cornucopia. Like it was like, actually like you felt it. And it was, um, you know, I feel so lucky for that entire thing. That would be my favorite. So that, yeah. that scene where you had to jump around the landmines, did they just tell you to just jump wherever you wanted to, or did you have a set path that you had to jump on? I think I had a set ish path, but then I think they were also like, do whatever you want. And then, okay, <laughs> this is sort of a funny story, which is that there's always been a joke in my family that like, I'm the artist and everyone else is super athletic. So like, I'm not the athletic one, <laughs> but I had to do all this athletic training for the film. And I was like, I was like a real athlete by the end of it. Like I felt really good about myself. And after we watched it, I was like, dad, you know, cause jokingly, I'm like always searching for my father's approval in regard to my athletics specifically, which by the way, my parents were very supportive um, of my artistry and everything. So it's like a running joke in the family. But I was like, dad, like, didn't you see how fast I ran after like jumping over all the mines or maybe it was when I was grabbing the, um, grabbing the bag. I was like, did you see how fast I ran? Like, wasn't that impressive? And he was like, yeah, but like, they obviously sped that up. Oh my God. I was like, no, you did I was like, I worked really hard for that. Oh, it was so funny. We brutal. laughed so hard. Yeah. <laughs> brutal, brutal, brutal. The journey for approval. Um, <laughs> No, but I, it was, I, I honestly think that they like vaguely were like, kind of do this, but I think I kind of also made it my own thing, if I'm being honest. So I was, we we're going to ask you next if you still keep in touch with anyone from the room, but I saw on your Instagram that you just did something with Jack Quaid. Yeah, Jack's still one of my closest friends. Um, we've remained super tight through the years and he's just one of my favorite people on the planet. Um yeah, I love him so much. He's a wonderful human, and he deserves literally every success in the world because I don't know a better person than him. So, um, are you a boys yeah. fan? <laughs> I, I, I've actually not really watched it. I've told him this. I've told him this. <laughs> I think I watched like the first episode. I was like, proud of you, Jack. And then I was like, this is violent. I yeah, can't keep watching it. it. And so it's I a lot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Jack and I even, like, we spent the last few years writing a Mario musical together, which I don't think we'll ever see the right of day because mm. we don't own the rights. But we wrote, like, all the songs and the script and everything. We did it during COVID. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Just so funny. Um, but yeah, he's, he and I remain close and I'm still really friendly with everybody else. Whenever I run into them or cross paths, it's like, we have this shared history that's really, really special, you know? Taking Ballad into consideration, which movie is your favorite? Which book? Yeah. So which, oh. which book and, and which movie? Well, I'm so biased for a movie because like I could write a dissertation on the first film and why I think it was so brilliant and so brilliantly shot. And like, this is like not even me being a part of it, but it like, it launched a movement. It was totally different than anything we'd seen. It launched this mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know. I think it was like, it, it was, it, it launched the dystopian like genre for YA. It was dark. It was risky. Gary shot it brilliantly he shot it like an independent film like everyone made fun of the shaky cam but like Gary always on set was like we're shooting this like an indie because if we shoot it glossy like Harry Potter or Twilight which is what everyone was comparing it to Mm -hmm. like you can't have kids killing kids like that like you just can't and I think that like the one thing I will say and this is a sadness that I have is like if you do look at like ballad is I do think we have gotten a little desensitized in the 10 years since Hunger Games did come out of like now we're actually kind of used to seeing that and we see that often on the big screen in like a glossy way and we're kind of okay with it now in a weird way I mean we're not but we are and I think that Gary did such a beautiful job of really putting you in it and it's like when you rewatch that movie but there's not a lot of dialogue it's like it's really well told through the action and through the acting I mean he I mean, his casting was just incredible. Jen was perfect. And like, it is, you know, in my opinion, it was such a risky movie. And I think it was, I really commend Lionsgate for taking the risk and for doing it and for doing it the way they did and honoring Gary's vision. But it really was, it's like, you look at it, it's like the costumes were all handmade. Like you can tell, you know, it was like there were four costumers that were working their asses off to costume 350 extras one day. And like, they like... Mm everything was so like we were on such a tight budget because it was only made for like 60 million or something which for these movies is kind of you know small um 
you know, there's something about it that I think has kind of this artistic magic of all these people pulling together to make this thing incredible. And it's raw and it's gritty and it's great. And it broke through. It like totally broke through Mm -hmm. and it still stands the test of time in every way possible. And so I think that it's a really, you know, that's why I think it's a really incredible movie. I think Catching Fire was phenomenal. I think it solidified Hunger Games as being one of the great, like, you know, trilogies of our time. Um, and I think Francis did an incredible job, like helming that part of the series. So Catching Fire is probably, you know, up there with my favorites, but I, I will always be, I, Catching Fire is my favorite book, but I think A Hunger Games is my favorite movie, mm-hmm. but I loved the most recent one. I keep thinking about it, which is like one of those things to me that shows that it's a really good movie. It's like, after I finished mm-hmm. it, I was like, I, I really haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I loved the ending. I loved how they played it. I thought the acting was fantastic. I thought it was so well shot. So I, I'm a really, I'm really, ex- I was really excited about it. Cause of course you're always so scared. I was like, what if it sucks? You know, <laughs> yeah, I was like, what exactly. if it's too glossy? What if it's lost its darkness? And like, it really didn't. And that was so exciting to see. So do you have any plans to read mm. the book? Yeah, probably. Um, I still feel like I'm like a little like scarred, not like scarred from, but I was on such like Hunger Games overload for so long that like, Oh, yeah. You know, you kind of have to take like a little bit of like a, I don't know, but I, I do really want to, I, I do want to read it at one point. And I love Suzanne Collins. I think she's so incredible. She's such a good writer. Yeah, because I think, uh, I think one of mm. the things that was like, I really love the movie, but I think one of the things I was missing was um, a lot of Snow's internal monologue. Um, oh, he has a lot of twisted book. thoughts that go on mm. and it is a really interesting look into his character. So I would definitely love to check it out then. A hundred percent. Um, I'll look at it because that would be, I would love to see that. And I also thought Tom Blythe is like fucking amazing. <laughs> he was yeah, it's great. I yeah. was like, he was perfect casting. I was so happy they did that. Okay. So if Suzanne were to write another book, what would be your choice for the era slash game she chooses to focus on? Oh, interesting. Um, oh, that's really interesting. I don't know. I think maybe I'd be curious to see some of the other quarter quals. Like what kind of those looked like? Maybe something sort of in the middle. We've now kind of seen the beginning. We've sort of seen the end. Like mm-hmm. what did your like 50 look like? I'm also curious to see sort of the like pre, pre, pre era. Like what kind of caused the riots? How did all of that yeah. start it? You know, all of that. I want to see the origin story of Peter Dinklage's character. But it's just because <laughs> I love Peter Dinklage and I want to watch him in everything. He was really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was, he's always good. When is he not good? It's so, exactly. it's so weird, though. Uh, I only learned literally last month that he's American. I thought he's British. I know. <laughs> I know. And that's it's so crazy. I think he was like the only Game of Thrones actor that was um, American. Yeah, I blame Game of Thrones. And he's just he was just really good at his accent, I guess. <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. He's so good. One thing I struggle with when watching Catching Fire because it was a very different cinematic feel, and I love the shaky cam. I really liked how it, like you, just like you said, it felt like yeah, an indie film. Was raw. And so, I, when I saw Catching Fire, it, it took me a second to get into that different, you know, style. Uh, just stylistically, it was jarring, but I, it was a, a masterpiece. But it was definitely its own type of masterpiece. So I do, I did miss that kind of feel that came with the Hunger Games. And so that's mm-hmm. my only, you know, even not. I don't want to say critique because it would be comparing two very different styles but I'm, i do miss that part yeah totally a hundred percent i agree with you i think it just was one of the things that made it like elevated mm-hmm. uh, some of the cast and producers have recently been asked about the possibility of more hunger games movies would you like to see more hunger Game hunger games movies made yeah i mean if they're good i think that like they shouldn't make one if they don't have a real re- like i would be really sad if they made one for the sake of like being cash cow and like mm-hmm. just wanting to mm-hmm. make one but i think that like and that was my fear with ballad of songbirds i was like i hope it's good you know but then i i was really mm-hmm. it felt very necessary and i really liked it and i felt like it really fit into the um you know into the whole sequence so i i only if there is a reason to is what i would say um, so Jackie, what is next for you? What are your projects that you're working on? Any plans? You said earlier that you're writing, which is really interesting to me because I'm a writer too. So oh, like, cool. are you writing like stuff to film? Yeah. Like, so maybe I'm, movies? I have, uh, three films coming out. I have one called The Art Thief, which is about, um, this very famous heist in history where, 
a Rembrandt and a Vermeer and a ton of other priceless paintings were stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. It's a very famous heist in American history. And this is kind of a fictional retelling where, because nobody knows who did it, where it was kind of this like Bonnie and Clyde. And I'm the Bonnie in it. So that was so fun. I got to live in Provincetown for like two months. I got to learn how to paint. It was amazing. So that's coming out soon. Look for that. And then actually coming out on Apple in like two weeks is a comedy film that I'm starring in called Wine Club. And it's a cult comedy. And it's about a, a wine cult in Napa Valley. And, oh, um, and it's that so amazing. funny. There's a ton of <laughs> wonderful comedians in it. And I'm really stoked about it. Um, so that's coming out soon. And then I did a movie with Jenna Ortega and Paramount called Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall. And that should be coming out. And with Percy Hines White from um, Wednesday. And that should be coming out in the spring. And then I'm about to do a movie about Kent State that I'm really stoked about. Oh, wow. And then there's a couple other films on the docket. Um, so there's a lot of acting stuff coming up and coming out. And I just, uh, I just was in Starfield, which was a huge video game. Um, I played one of the main companion nice. characters. Um, I love that. so that was super fun. And then in terms of writing, um, I'm writing actually a lot of screenplays. And so, um, I'm working right now on, um, I'd say probably the most exciting one is I'm doing a Christmas rom-com for the people that do all the Christmas rom-coms for like. <laughs> I love that. Something like that. And um, I think I'm also going to get to act in it. So I'm stoked about that. Um, so cool. And then I'm starring in a, uh, a movie musical that I wrote. And I'm composing wow. all the music oh. for. And I'll be singing and acting and dancing in it. And the choreographer is amazing. And the director is incredible. And the producer is incredible. And uh, we're just kind of ramping up stuff for that right now. But we're hoping to film end of next year. So that's a really exciting project. Because I've been working on it mm. for so long. And it's also just like everything that I can do in a thing, you know, and then yeah. I have a ton of other writing going on, but, um, of different, uh, scripts and things like that. But those are kind of the ones that I'm the most excited about and that I'm acting in and, um, and stuff coming out. So hopefully in the next couple of years, you guys are going to be, um, seeing a lot more of my work, which is a fun yeah. prospect. I've been working very hard for a long time to kind of get all this stuff going and it's fun to sort of see it kind of take off or like move, yeah. you know? That sounds amazing. Like you have a full slate, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> well, because I went to college and kind of like right after Hunger Games, like literally right after. And so ever, like my reps kind of all dropped me and it was, I had to sort of start <laughs> over. And so it's been really nice to be like coming back and being like, I'm back. Mm-hmm. And I got to stop going. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now Welcome I'm back. <laughs> working on it on so many different levels as well, where it's like, I'm not just the actor, I'm also like controlling it or producing it or, you know, writing it or whatever, which is a, um, a much more gratifying place to be. I think Fox face would be proud. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, obviously you're on social media, so where can fans most easily interact with you? Probably on Instagram, uh, Jackie underscore Emerson. I have a TikTok. um, I'm trying to get better about using it. I'll just occasionally <laughs> post like random videos there or songs there or things like so, that. So what is your TikTok username so that people can go and follow you and know who you are when you're talking in their comments and arguing <laughs> with them about, <laughs> about I don't actually know, but let me look it up. This is how little I use that. Okay. TikTok, oh Jacqueline Emerson. Okay. I'm at Jacqueline Emerson. Okay. <laughs> on TikTok. There we go. That's good. And um, and then what else? Oh, and then my website, I'm always kind of posting updates on, which is just JackieEmerson.com, but that's linked on my Instagram. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for answering our questions and telling a talking story with us about The Hunger Games. It was really fun having you on. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I'm, I'm so thrilled I got to be here and it was so nice to meet you guys. And um, it's so fun chatting. As I said from the beginning, yeah. I've always been a huge fan. And so it's fun to kind of nerd out with, with fellow fellow. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. It's yeah. the best, really. Okay, thank you. Thanks, All right. guys. Thank you, Jackie. Bye. Thank you for joining us for another episode of JabberCast. If you're enjoying our podcast, tell other Hunger Games fans that they can find us at jabberjays.net and leave us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. Join the JabberJays Discord server by going to youburnwithus.jjdiscord, all lowercase, and following the invite link to join discussions with other fans.
can follow us on Instagram at JabberJaysNet. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.